Welcome to Joy of Business Radio, hosted by Joy of Business facilitators from around the world, with special shows from Simone Millicis, the founder and creator of Joy of Business. Are you bored or dissatisfied with your work or business? Joy of Business is an invitation to a completely new way of creating. Did you know your business and job can actually be fun and joyful? If what you are currently doing isn't working for you, listen in to this show full of pragmatic tools from Access Consciousness, which change everything in business, from money to finance, staff, creativity, productivity, communication, and beyond. Joy of Business Radio, weekly on Om Times Radio. Hello, everyone, and this is Sylvia Puentes, one of the Joy of Business facilitators joining you, and it's my very first call here with all of you, so I am delighted to have this hour with you all with the topic of being showing up as the greatness of you and with the Joy of Business and showing up as the greatness of you in business and really, truly in every area of your life. So with this call, um, if anyone's listening live or whoever's listening live, if you have any questions, let us know. But otherwise, I I wonder what this call can actually contribute to you and what it is about business that either you're not fully committed to or you judge or you are not truly seeing the greatness of you that if you actually let it show up would change and create a lot more ease in everything you desire in business and your life. So, I mean, that's just kind of this question of like, wow, I do wonder what this call can contribute to all of you now and in the future. So showing up as the greatness of you, it's interesting. Uh, recently, as a facilitator, I travel the world, facilitate classes, and attend many classes. And Gary Douglas, the founder of Access Consciousness, had a class, an advanced class in Europe called The Art of Greatness. And it was really fascinating because one of the things that I got from that class was truly how much time, energy we use to focus on all the things that are wrong with us, all the things that we need think we need to fix and change in order to have something better in our life or in our business. And truly it was like this shift in perspective of beginning to go, okay, if I'm not looking at the wrongness in me, what could I begin to acknowledge that's great about me? And that was actually one of the questions I put as the description. It's like, what is great about you you haven't acknowledged? And it's interesting that it's somehow we have bought the point of view that if we pinpoint exactly what's wrong or what the problem is or what the issue is, and if we can begin to put that into words and figure that out, that we actually think that will change things. You know, it's, and for me, it's like one of the things and the joys that I have in my life and in my business is really continuing to to celebrate the, uh, the well, it's like the joy in every creation and every choice and what that creates. So I wonder, what is great about you that you haven't acknowledged? And, you know, I would almost invite you to begin to make a list. And truly, I mean, what if you started with three things? And it can be the simplest things, What like what's great about me is that I make some great pasta or what's great about me is that I'm organized or what's great about me is that, you know, I really listen to people. Whatever whatever that one thing is that you can begin to acknowledge about you. It might even be that you have great hair. I mean, this is where it's like there's no right or wrong answer. And it's just like almost like this new muscle to begin to go, wow, what is great about me? So how many of you have actually denied acknowledging anything great about you because of what people would say? Like, who do you think you are? You're being egotistical. You're, who do you, you know, you're getting a big head or, you know, you should really kind of look at what's wrong, you know, rather than what's great that's not that great or whatever it is. It's like, truly, what if it's time to shift that and begin to look at what's right about you, what's great about you? And you don't have to share it with anyone. What if this was just for you? So if you're listening live, I'll just take a few minutes and go, wow, what are three things I could list that are great about me? 
Now, I must say that, um, you know, growing up in California, both my parents are from Mexico, and it's interesting that, you know, being a second language learner, I mean, you may hear a little accent or not, but it's interesting of how quickly I picked up about what was wrong about me and how much I wanted to hide of who I was or sometimes, I mean, especially in those teenage years, it was like I didn't want to acknowledge that, um, you know, my family was from Mexico. And, and at that age, it's like I was Mexican and that I even knew Spanish or, you know, there was a sense of embarrassment of, and it was, I wasn't aware of that that's what I was picking up from all <laughs> of society and, what the judgments and projections were about Mexican people in California in particular. And it wasn't until late teenage years where I was like, wait, wait a moment. Actually, this isn't a wrongness. I actually know a second language. I can actually contribute to people. I can actually make a difference using the skills that I have. And at that point, and I actually, you know, I've been looking at that, and I'm not sure exactly what that pivotal change was for me, but I do recall being at a grocery store, and there was this gentleman struggling with, uh, you know, communicating with the cashier about something. And so I quickly stepped in and started to translate. And there was this this interesting um, reaction almost from both of them. But I was just like, yep, yeah, you know, translated, helped out, and then walked away. And at that moment, I thought like, wow, where else could I contribute? Because it's almost like I think people were surprised, one, that I would take the time, two, that I even cared, and three, that I didn't, I don't have this typical look, I guess, what people expect a Mexican to look like, whatever that is, but I tend to be lighter skin. I tend to just kind of walk different maybe and dress different. I don't know. And somehow I tend to surprise people when I either speak Spanish or I go out of my way to help. And for me, it's been this interesting target of like, wow, what if we could have a kinder, greater world? And what is it that I know and what is it that I be that I can contribute to that? So I'm sharing this with you because it's almost like what have you hidden? What are you hiding that's great about you that you're actually not using or even not acknowledging that's great about you that could actually be a huge contribution to the world? And so how does this all tie to business? It's, it's interesting. So as a certified facilitator, when I first started in Access, I started to facilitate in English because it was my point of view and my judgment that Spanish wasn't very strong or that, you know, I couldn't do it. You know, I had people teasing me that I didn't speak good English, and then there was people teasing me that I didn't speak good Spanish. So it was like, it was kind of an interesting dichotomy there. And I had this kind gentleman, um, David, and he actually said, Sylvia, why are you not facilitating in Spanish? And I thought to myself, like, well, you know, I had all my excuses and justifications. He goes, do you get how many people are looking for a niche? And you have one. So it was so interesting that truly in those seconds that he said that, I chose. It's like, okay, done. I'll facilitate in Spanish. So I scheduled a class right away, and it's like I started, and that was, oh, so many years ago, and that actually has been predominantly what I facilitate in Spanish. I would say maybe 80 to 90% of my classes at this point have been in Spanish, and it, I have acknowledged the contribution that has been, and the fact that I haven't stopped because it's been a wrongness. So it's like, wow, and I look at that now, it's like, wow, if I would have stopped and bought the judgment that I didn't speak good Spanish and that I wasn't quote unquote qualified, I wouldn't have contributed in all the many ways that I've contributed. So it's like how many people use their reasons and justifications of being either good, bad, to actually stop them from actually being the greatness of them. So everything that is and everywhere you guys are holding back the greatness of you because of what people have said, because of what people might think, their judgments, or wondering if you actually can do it, <laughs> would you get out of your own way? And then just let everybody else's point of view and judgment be an interesting point of view and still choose it. Because that's one of the things that I get. It was truly my choice in that second to leap that actually created the most. And I was talking with my wonderful friend, uh, Melanie, this morning, and it was interesting. 
I started to look at like what my points of views have been about me and business and what I even consider business was that keeps me still to this day not truly acknowledging the success or the ease that I have in business. And so my question here is, it's like, what have you defined business to be that it isn't? And what have you defined isn't business that it is? Because there's something there, and I, other facilitators might have mentioned, but what if when you wake up in the morning, you're in business? What if your life is your business? How are you running your life? Is there a sense of joy and possibilities and, you know, everything from, like, you can be in your home. I mean, if you think about your home, you can actually, you know, wow, I'd like to change this. What would it be to add this? Like, what would be fun? You know, so where are you not acknowledging you actually are in business? And if you actually acknowledged it and then added the element of beginning to acknowledge the greatness of you, what would that create? So everything that brings up and everything where you, there might be some space in your head, like, I don't get it and I'm confused and like, oh my, you know, everything that is, would you guys destroy and then create all of that? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. And that, for some of you that are new to the Access Consciousness Tools, is the clearing statement of access. And you can get more information at www.theclearingstatement.com. And basically, it's going to that, that those places where we really, truly um, have hidden and, and locked whatever that is that's sticking us and energetically clearing that to create more space. And sometimes a lot of space where you're like, wow, I, you can't think. And actually, that's the gift. <laughs> so what else? What else could I share with you guys that might create more for you around this topic of showing up as the greatness of you? So the other um, part that I was kind of looking at with this call is really this place where so many people have these incredible ideas for businesses, their projects that end up staying on the shelf or written in their notebooks or just kind of hidden as dreams or that people aren't actually willing to take the next step. So what is it that you've been dreaming about, desiring, keeping secret, what business idea, what project idea are you actually not willing to bring out to the world because you have judgment, expectations, conclusions of what and how that should look? So everything that is, we just trying to create all that time for God's billion. Right, wrong, good and bad, pun, pop, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyond. One of the things that I, I do recommend if you haven't started it is to create either, you know, on your phone or in a little notebook and start creating, creating a list of all the ideas that come to you. The ideas, uh, you know, you ever have those days where you're like, you know, you could be at a coffee shop or, you know, taking a walk and all of a sudden you like some idea, random idea shows up and you're like, oh, that would be awesome. And then right afterwards, the sneaky part of like, oh, but I couldn't do that, or that would be too much work, or it's like all the justifications and reasons, and they might not even be yours. It's probably maybe what you heard of a friend or someone that's tried it, or or it's been done, or whatever comes in afterwards. Like, what if you didn't listen to that part, and what if you actually just began to go, okay, I'll write it down, and not have a point of view about it. Write it down. Maybe it's an idea for a book. Maybe it's an idea for a class. Maybe it's an idea of, you know, a project or a collaboration with someone. And so what if you just began to write those ideas down and close the notebook and then, you know, every day, every other day, ask, wow, are one of these for now? Is this for me or someone else? Is it for now or later? And what if you ask the actual project the book, whatever the idea is, to pop in your world when it's time for it to come out to the world. So what if this actually became a creative, fun game? And it's like, all right, there's infinite possibilities. There's infinite ways to generate and create money. And there's just infinite possibilities of different businesses. And some of you are so great at actually perceiving what the future 
is what the future business of what's going to be desired or what's going to be something people are going to need in the future that maybe you haven't acknowledged. It might seem like that crazy idea, like no one needs that now, but is that you actually perceiving a future? And so if you didn't judge you and you didn't judge the idea, what if you could play with it? And this is the part about joy of business that I really enjoy and I've actually acknowledged more about myself and it has been the play. It really is like, if you have an idea and it has this energy of like, it kind of has you like smile, have that breath air. And it's so light and expansive. Like you're, I mean, there's times for me that my molecules or like my whole body seems to vibrate, which I think is crazy. And yet I can't deny it anymore. And it's like that energy of play, that energy of joy. And then it's interesting because as soon as I go to thinking, that all starts to dissipate. It just disappears in a sense. And so with this, it's like, wow, what is it that you know? What is it that lights you up? And what if you did not need to know how it was going to show up? What if it was really out of a question of going like, wow, what would it be like? And who can I talk to? And who could I ask for help with this idea? Wow, it, it really is this moment of beginning to play with questions, which, again, is this incredible, I would say this, like, new muscle that comes with playing with the tools of joy of business as well with access consciousness. It's like really where questions are the gift and the key for you opening up to the possibilities that are available for you. And not many people actually give you this sense in this, knowing that that is the key that can unlock so much. So we're going to go on a short break. And in this break, if you haven't written that list down right, what are three things that are great about you that you haven't acknowledged? And we'll come back more to talk, continue this conversation. Thank you. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Own Times. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. People been saying to your friend, get a different face. someone being bullied online you can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool and by letting your friend know you care learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org brought to you by the ad council well back here to join you guys on this uh topic of showing up as the greatness of you i am sylvia puentes uh joy of business facilitator and in our right before our break, I invited you that if you hadn't made that list of three things that are great about you, to begin to play with that. Um, there may be some resistance of even considering to look at that. And if you did come up with three things easily, I'd invite you to write three more. Like, what if that could be a new exercise for you? Like, what's great about me? What's, you know, whatever showed up in your day, in your morning, it's like, wow, what was right about that that I haven't acknowledged? Because it truly is a new muscle. It is something that I do get that would change the world. Because if you're beginning to see the greatness of you, guess what? You actually might begin to see the greatness of everybody around you. 
You know, not to say there's some people choosing some things that might not be so great, but you might actually change the perspective in the way you're actually looking at life, business, your relationships. So I would love to hear what that brings up for you. And the other conversation we were finishing up uh, right before the radio show break was actually beginning to play with the with a, a booklet or a, kind of an ideas book, but beginning to write all those whispers you get of what some ideas might be about projects or businesses or collaborations with someone, and you begin to write them down because they show up randomly throughout your day and then beginning to ask questions. What questions can really begin can become the key to opening up possibilities that you'd never considered. And this is where, you know, one of the challenges I think for many people is, especially when they're looking at business, is going like, you need to come up with the right answer. You need to come up with the formula that's either been used, proven, that works, or you need to like go from A, B, and C and kind of work through business ideas linearly. But what if you actually know, and what if there's a different possibility where you can extrapolate and kind of work A, C, D in creating a business? And where can you actually begin to ask a question, who can I talk to, where can I go to get more information about this, whatever the idea is? What could I choose today to, you know, be one step closer to actualizing this? And one of the pieces that I actually mentioned briefly was who could you ask for help? And this has been an incredible gift from Simone Millis, the founder of Joya Business, who has gifted me recently, and it's the new muscle of asking for help. And interesting, being the daughter of five uh, of five girls, so I have four sisters, one of the older ones, I thought I had to have it together, figure it out, because I needed to guide them. <laughs> that was my interesting point of view in my family, and that created oh, lots of work for me and helping them, being superior, telling them what to do. But it's interesting, this uh, not willing to ask for help, thinking I had to figure it out, and that if I did ask for help, it actually meant I failed. So shifting that perspective with the help of a lot of the different calls that Simone Millis does, um, you know, she's had this incredible program called Getting Out of Debt Joyfully that I've been a part of. She had an incredible telecall with David Cubis recently, uh, The Ease of Money. But this conversation about beginning to ask for help, not because you failed, but actually because there's a gift that someone can be to actually creating more. And what if people actually would like to help? So what if you know who those people may be that will contribute to your business and creative project ideas or whatever that is? So anywhere that you haven't been willing to ask for help, for the judgment that you don't have it put together, you haven't figured it out, or because it might mean you failed, or that you're not smart enough, or whatever that is for you, would you be willing to destroy and then create all that? Everything that brings up, right, Ron good, bad, all night, pop, pop, shorts, boys, and beyond. And truly, like, wow. And I wonder, like, how much more we could actually receive as we begin to ask for help. Because it is asking for help from a friend or, a, you know, a business partner or, you know, someone in the community or whatever, whoever that might be. But what if that begins to also increase your muscle of receiving? And that muscle of receiving begins to invite more into your life. I know it sounds crazy, but if we're walking around with these walls and barriers of, I got it, I got it, I can do this, I don't need any help, I'll figure it out, truly how thick are those walls that actually keeps you from seeing the possibilities and the people and the things that may contribute to you? So what have you been holding that arm's distance away that is right in front of you that could contribute to everything you'd like to create or maybe contribute to one of those ideas and projects and businesses you've been kind of hiding even from yourself lately. So anything that doesn't allow you to just lower that wall a little more and begin to go, wow, who could I ask help from today? What if every day, so these are, I guess, little, a, a call on some little play challenges. One is, you know, acknowledging something great about you. The other one is like, what if once a day you can ask someone for help? And it could be that muscle of you're at the grocery store and you ask for someone to help you with your groceries to the car. I mean, how many of you resist that? As heavy as the bag is, or maybe it's not so heavy and you're not willing to ask. So what if it could be a new muscle of asking and receiving? 
Awesome. So for those of you that are willing to play, I wonder what would change for you. So it was interesting as I was mentioning, you know, getting this little booklet of ideas or projects that are coming to you and beginning to ask those projects and ideas now, later, someone else. I, it had me recall um, something that I, for myself, that I, I, I couldn't deny anymore that certain whispers show up that might be whispers of the future. And, you know, maybe you have your own story of when you've had something like that show up for you. So this was, oh, you know, several years ago. Uh, I think I was waking up one morning when all of a sudden I got this whisper about gold. And it was this whisper about like, hey, buy gold. And up until that point, I hadn't heard much about gold. I hadn't, you know, um, so I went online and I kind of started to look at, you know, what it would be to buy gold. Um, you know, I knew there was gold bars and, and things of the sort. So I started to look at it and I think I even uh, uh, sent away for something, you know, for more information. And as I was searching, I started to go into doubt. And I started to go into doubt about, you know, the whole website and, you know, started to be real skeptical about the website. And, and then I thought, well, I'll still continue to look. And and so I kept that all to myself. I looked, I ordered for some information. And then I think there was a packet of information that arrived. And as soon as it arrived, I might have looked at it for five, ten minutes. And then I thought to myself, this is ridiculous. Like, I don't know anyone in my family that's ever invested in gold. And tossed it away. So about a week or two after that was the first time that gold took a skyrocket. All of a sudden, the news was gold had gone up. And, you know, people were just looking at that crazy. I mean, it went up and people, some people were celebrating. Other people were like, whoa, the people were still buying. And then I even thought to myself, and it, it's almost like a thought, but it's it's not even a thinking because it doesn't come from, well, it shows up as a thought. I'll leave it at that. In that sense of like, oh, well, maybe I should still invest. Like I should buy some gold. Did I do that? No. Because the conclusion again was like, what do I know about gold? I'm going to get ripped off. I'm going to. Again, not a question, total conclusion. And guess what? Gold went up again. So much that I started to look at, and right now, you know, sharing with you guys, it's like how many reference points are we using that keep us from actually choosing what will create and invite more of what we're asking for? So for me, I, I had been looking at how can I create multiple sources of income and, you know, what else can I create with my money? And there was questions there of desiring more. And yet my reference point was my family. They had not done this. No one I knew had done this. So that then meant that I was crazy. Who am I to actually step into something new? And what did I know? And started to doubt. So what if doubt is actually a distractor? And it actually distracts you from truly knowing what you actually know and who you actually be. So... I mean, I share this story because how many stories do you have of those moments? You know, I love it. I actually talk to some friends and they'll have these stories like, I actually had that idea. Someone is now patented it and someone is now selling it <laughs> and crazy, you know, what might seem crazy ideas. And yet they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't run with it. So what if all those ideas and possibilities are out there kind of in, in space for all of us to choose? And really the people that actually choose them and take action are the ones that end up creating and receiving and sometimes creating great businesses. I mean, think about Uber. Even the company of Uber, I thought, that actually started with someone's idea, as crazy as it seemed. And now it's a billion-dollar company. It's like all around the world. It's like, wow, I would like to have something like that. And what keeps you and me not choosing to actually follow that idea and create something greater that's never been seen before? Is it who you are? Is it from the culture you come from? Is it because of how you grew up? Is it, you know, your, have to do with your education? What if actually that's not true? So how many of you guys are waiting to have the certification, the qualifications, um, the money to begin a project? What if that's actually not required? in these 10 seconds and where can you be in the question that if it is money, it's like, okay, there's so many possibilities. I hear these crazy stories now from people. It's like, well, I created this and then I created that and I invited so-and-so to invest and now they're off with the project because people are willing to invest and they started with very little capital. 
So as I'm actually sharing with you guys this topic, it's like, wow, I'm actually really in the question. It's like, what is it that I know? What is it that I know that is available to create that would invite people to a greater possibility, that it would invite people to know that they can choose and have more, and that would create something greater in the world? So it's like, what if that question can be percolating in your world and could then invite you to actually begin to acknowledge those whispers of possibilities that show up for you? And what if that is the greatness of you? What if one of the things that's great about you is that you, oh, it's almost like, wow. Okay, well, let me, let me ask you this. What does greatness mean to you? If you had to give two things of what greatness means, what would you say? Because it's almost like how many of you have not given yourself permission to be great or are waiting for something to then define that you're great? I mean, who's great in your world? You know, is it an actor, a singer, someone that, you know, is it Gandhi? Is it like, like who has, who is a great being that you've either known in your lifetime or in history that, that has been someone great? And what were some of the elements of what they were choosing? And what did they create for the world? And if they're no longer living, what did they actually leave or how, you know, it's interesting because if it's not someone who's living, they actually chose something that left such an impression that you to this day are still talking about that person. So for me, it's interesting, um, you know, looking at what I've chosen along my life. There was this lady once who said, well, Sylvia, you're just like this. What did she say? She said something like, you're just out to change the world. And at that moment, I thought, what is she saying? And uh, I never actually knew that that's what people were hearing from me. But I started off um, after college um, as a kindergarten teacher and, you know, taught a couple other different grades. And it's funny that even as a kindergarten teacher, I actually chose that because I, after talking to a couple friends, I mean, I was looking at education and that thinking that that was one way to make an impact. And as I was talking to different friends that hated school or just had these, like, you know, terrible, really, for some of them, memories of education and had resisted continuing, and I asked them, I'm like, well, what, what changed it? When did that first come up for you? They said it was in kindergarten. It was their teacher that was either mean or judgmental. Or, and I thought, oh, wow, is that where it starts for many people? those first kind of big school days in kindergarten. So I thought like, wow, what if I could be one person as a kindergarten teacher that could change someone's reality and perspective of themselves and education that could then change the trajectory of their life and in an education. So I didn't make it my purpose, but I got to see it's like, wow, I can make a huge impact there. So that's who I chose to be in kindergarten. And, uh, I see kids to this day that are now much older in their 20s and they still remember me. And there's that sense of, you know, being in the questions like, I guess I did always want to create something greater. And that's something that I recently have acknowledged that everywhere I go, I would like to create something greater. Whether it's one conversation of um, speaking with someone and having them you know, be heard, having them see the greatness of them or having them be inspired in some way. It's like, I, that is something that lights me up. So what lights you up and who do you already be that you haven't acknowledged as a gift in the world? And it can show up in so many different ways. And this is where we don't have to be like anyone else or even compare ourselves. And yet we can be invited and inspired by someone to keep choosing. So this this element of the, the joy of business and how showing up as the greatness of you can contribute to your business. It's like you might be really good at the skill that you have, 
You know, if you have a coach, you know, if you're a great coach or a therapist or you might be, you know, great at tile work or you might be, you know, really great at promoting or, you know, marketing, like whatever it is, many of you have these incredible skills and yet there's something for many people in their business like, well, I'm great at what I do, but I haven't been great at getting out there. I haven't been great at expanding my business. What if one of the elements that could contribute to that is you beginning to acknowledge what's great about you? Because, you know, there's many different people that do tile work. There's many people that do accounting. There's many people that do whatever the specific skill is. And yet the element of you, when you're being you and having the greatness of you, is what makes it so different. So what if you don't have to look to be like anyone else? Or what if you could truly begin to acknowledge what's great about you that energetically would infuse your business with a whole different energy, a whole, um, and this is where it's like, it's almost like we don't tend to speak about this a lot in business, and I know that's changing, and that's part of the gift that Joy of Business brings out to the world, is that we begin to look at the elements truly of what makes a successful business. A lot of the time is when you're willing to be more of you when you're willing to leap into what you know is possible with like going, okay, this may fail, but you know what? I'm going and continuing to be in the question. So it's like, what if you acknowledging more of you could expand and grow your business? And I'm sharing this with you guys as well as that uh, that has probably been one of the things that I've noticed has really changed and expanded my business as a worldwide facilitator. You know, I facilitate classes. I've done them all through different countries in South America, as well as in Europe. And I'm actually headed out to Budapest, you know, Ecuador to finish off the year. And it's interesting that I recall maybe about a year ago or a little further than a year, I had, you know, the different teams that were working with me. They're like, Sylvia, we need you actually to promote you. <laughs> and it was so funny. It was this, I'm like, what do you mean? You know, there were different classes and I'd be happy to talk about access consciousness or, you know, the other specialty programs that I would, uh, that I would facilitate. And yet the invitation was, Sylvia, you actually need to promote you. And that was something new for me. So after the next break, it's like, what is it? And what would it contribute for you to acknowledge you into your business? And so I will continue with that story afterwards and see and wonder what that would contribute to you. Thank you so much. See you in a few. The Real Conscious Connection. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday. And together, we can discover what's really going on. Imagine being fired because of who you love. Imagine being denied medical treatment because of who you marry. Imagine being evicted because of who you are. Millions of Americans don't have to imagine this. They have to live it. Because in 31 states, it's legal to discriminate against LGBT people. Get the facts at beyondido.org. Brought to you by the Gill Foundation and the Ad Council.
Welcome back, everyone, and you're joining Sylvia Puentes, Joy of Business Facilitator, and this OM Times show today. And now, continuing with this conversation, um, and wow, I actually lost where we left off. So what's right about that I'm not getting? <laughs> I was quickly kind of responding to someone here during our break and lost what that was. So, and I know it was a story. So I'll just continue. Like, what if there's nothing wrong and what's right about this I'm not getting? It. Again, not going into the wrongness of me, not going into that we needed to go over that. So, oh, wow. It's interesting going to try to search for what this topic was that I left behind. I'm usually pretty good about making notes before uh, I move on to anything else, and I didn't do that this time. So the greatness of you. I mean, it really has been this conversation today about what if it's this new muscle of acknowledging the greatness of you that can actually transform and infuse a new energy into your business. And with that, um, it's so great. It just easily came back. So I got it. It was a story I was about to share with you. And it was this part of what if this energy, when you begin to acknowledge the greatness of you, it begins to show up more in all areas. And it does infuse all what you're creating. It will infuse into your relationships. It will infuse into your business. And you will actually not know that until you begin. So if you have not actually ever taken a few minutes to begin to acknowledge what's great about you. It might seem silly. It might seem so minute. Life may, might be a struggle right now, but what if that didn't matter? What if you can find the smallest thing and just begin? Because that is the key to creating more of any business and your life is just to begin. So I recall it was a little over a year where I, you know, I was facilitating actually out in Spain and with a lot of the the team that I had at the time was like, Sylvia, you actually need to promote you. And I I didn't know what that meant because for me, it was a place that I was avoiding. It, it was a place that I thought, well, it's not about me. It's about the tools. It's about, you know, what I was facilitating. And yet I was overlooking an element that I wasn't willing to acknowledge for myself. It didn't mean I had to tell anyone, but there's something when you begin to acknowledge it for yourself. So the gift of this class, I was facilitating a three-day class in Barcelona, Spain, and after the first morning, that first morning, about four hours, there had been so much change in the class. There had been an interaction through an activity that we had done where two people had a really challenging time. And I stayed with them, asked questions, I facilitated, and the shift that occurred for both of them and the entire class was incredible. So I chose to take myself out to lunch by myself um, during our lunch break. And at the lunch, I thought, oh, wow, that's actually different. I actually didn't run away from the intensity of the issue or whatever showed up in class. I stayed with them. I facilitated them all. That's actually different because actually one of the things that had occurred in my life growing up is whenever there was intensity, I would run. And I, I got to acknowledge, I was like, you know what? When people come to my class, whatever change they're asking for, whatever they're asking for, they're willing to go there. I will be there. I will not let, like, it's almost like not let, let them go. Like, I will be by their side until they get what they want or until, you know, the energy changes or whatever that is. And it was that moment of acknowledging, it's like, oh, this class, the tools are incredible. The, the Specialty program, it's amazing. And yet, when I'm facilitating, this is what you can count on. So for me, it was like, oh, wow. Like, I had not acknowledged that. So I think, it, you know, during my lunch break, on my way back to class, I made a short video and let people know, well, that energy infused the future classes. That energy then it created so much more. And, and a lot of the things that I chose following that, because I could not deny that for me anymore. And there is a different presence of me in a class and, and acknowledging what I'm willing to choose and what I'm willing to be for a lot of the people that come to my class and what I know is possible that I'm not going to run away. So, again, like I know that that shift for me created so much more in my business, in my life, in so many ways. So what if and what do you already know about you that you haven't truly acknowledged for you? 
again, you don't have to tell anyone or announce it to the world. And yet, what if you acknowledge in it for you? Like truly, like, wow, this is what I know. This is what I desire. This is what I be. That when you acknowledge that, that greatness of you will show up in different ways in all areas of your life. So, again, those little exercises that seem so simple, and yet what if it's an ongoing thing that you can do? You know, I've heard about gratitude journals, and this can, in a similar way, be that. But what if it was a greatness journal? What is great about me that I haven't acknowledged today that I could acknowledge, and you wrote it down for you? And what if every day you looked at one thing that was great about you? What would that change? So I'm excited. Um, You know, you can find me in different uh, places. You know, I'm on Facebook. I, You know, you have my professional page and you have my uh, timeline, Sylvia Puentes. And there's a website. It's currently being um, converted into English, but that's sylviapuentes.com. You can also find me on thejoyofbusiness.com. They'll be facilitating classes also um, online as well as in person soon, so those will be up. But you also have incredible facilitators around the world facilitating joy of business. And truly for me, it's like, you know, I wonder what we could transform worldwide with these tools. Because there is something when you acknowledge you and the uniqueness of you that can truly begin to expand all areas of your business if you have one already and again your business you know can just be your life it really doesn't have to be a business where you go into the office like what if you get to create that what best way that works for you I mean right now my business travels with me it's like if I'm with my laptop I have good internet I'm in business it's <laughs> or you know just me being in the world is my business and uh, so with that all in mind, these are incredible tools, and I do wonder what, you know, you choosing to have the greatness of you could show up in what way in your business and in your life. So with that said, like, what else could I share with you all today? What would contribute to all of you in having more of that joy and acknowledgement of who you be and what the greatness of you is? Because one of the things that I do know, for those of you that look at business and look at, wow, how could I generate and create more money in my life? It's like I do know that money follows joy. And if you have an acknowledgement of you, there is a sense of joy. And that, and it's almost like this different energy of joy because it can be this exuberant expression of, you know, where you're like happy and laughing and it's out loud. And it can also be this space of peace, of you just knowing so if you desire more money, if you desire to expand your business, what if you having the joy of you, the acknowledgement of the greatness of you can create more of that? So, and if you're willing to increase your level of receiving, maybe by asking for help from someone today, what would increase, how much money would that increase in your world as well? And would you be willing to ask, wow, what is it that I know that I've never acknowledged I know about business? Again, another question. What is it that I know about business that I've never acknowledged to know? I've never acknowledged I know. And what could I create that would have money show up right away? And what is the greatness of me that can contribute to everything I'm choosing today? So a few questions to play with. And truly, the gift of a question is not looking for the answer, but inviting, it's like the whole universe to show you what that is. So if you're willing to play, ask the question and kind of let it go and see what shows up. And if truly through this call, if you made it to the end and you still are struggling with the idea of what's great about you, what if you ask for help from the universe and ask universe, show me what's great about me today? show me. And maybe it'll be someone that says it. Maybe it'll be something that shows up in the day where you begin to acknowledge it. But what if we could begin to ask, universe, show me. What's great about me? And what is it that I know that could create more money 
and what is it that I could choose today that would expand my business right away. And remember, like, money follows joy. It's not joy that follows money. So everybody, you've been waiting for money to show up for your business to grow, for you to choose the, the joy and the happiness you be. Will you destroy and uncreate all of that? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. Yeah. It's, yeah. So in sometimes the other thing I share with a lot of people, it's like, that's another list too, but it's the sense of like, what is, what does bring you joy? I mean, for me, you know, especially during the fall and winter days, I was talking to a friend today and she's out in Sweden and she goes, I haven't seen the sun in a week. So it's all of a sudden it's like, I'm in California right now and it's that fall weather, a bit cold, but I enjoy the sun. So that sense of like stepping out and just getting a little, that those sudden rays, that little, that warmth from the sun, you know, and it could just be for a few minutes. It's like, oh, it feels so good. So for me, that contributes to me and to the joy that I be and the abundance that we have around that we don't always acknowledge the sun, that we forget that some parts of the world don't actually see that as much as we do, perhaps, on our part of the world. So, so delighted to be with you all. We have a few minutes left, and I wonder what else I could contribute to you of this call. And what is it that you've been asking for? And if you didn't hide the greatness of you anymore, what would be possible for you in everything you're choosing. Because this is where we're not separate. And I know that as I choose more or someone else on the other side of the planet chooses more, more kindness for themselves, more joy, more disacknowledgement of the greatness of you, it does impact the entire planet. So everywhere you've made yourself insignificant, and really where you've thought, like, well, it's just me. I don't make an impact. I'm not out, you know, doing big seminars or talking to big numbers of people. Like, what if that's not required? What about you, your world, your life, your family? Like, wherever you're interacting in the world, just even you with you, that world, like, when you change that, when you shift that, and you begin to have more kindness of you, you begin to have that joy that creates a peace in your world. It's like, what if that is a vibration that actually contributes to the entire planet? Would you be willing to be that? Would you be willing to be the catalyst by beginning to make one choice today to have more of that space of peace, calmness, joy, uh, celebration that, wow, as you touch your body, it's like, oh my gosh, what an incredible body. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful planet. Oh, whatever it is, it might be the leaf that falls from the tree that you begin to go, wow, the incredible abundance of this tree that is willing to let go of so many leaves and knows it'll grow more. There's no point of view about it. So where and who can we receive from today to truly acknowledge that we, by our choices, do create the future? And what future would you like to create? And what if you choosing to be the greatness of you and having that show up in your life, your business, your relationship could invite for more people to choose that, have that, and be that. And anything that doesn't allow that times the Godzillion, will you all destroy and uncreate it times the Godzillion? Right, wrong, good, bad, pun, pop, all nine shorts, boys, and beyond. Well, I apologize. I just realized that I'm a bit congested, so I'm not sure how that's showing up on the radio today. But uh, I have been traveling. Sleep is a little off. I've been contributing to a class out in Jerusalem, all the way from California. But you know what? That is the joy of creation for me. Like, I enjoy contributing so much to so many different creations and my own. And I'm asking new questions, too. It's not that I have to figure it out. For me, one of the new questions is like, wow, what is it that requires my attention today? And where can I get have more space? to actually create what I know is possible. Not from I need to slow down or I need to, you know, let go of certain things. I'm just asking, right? What would it be like to give myself more space to have more of what I know is possible in the world? So I so am grateful for all of you that are, have listened this far. And I 
truly desire that it contributed one thing to you and what would it take for this radio show to make it all around the world. And I am delighted to bring the Joy of Business classes around the world in multiple languages and uh, as well as being translated in multiple languages. It's like, what could we all gift the world from actually allowing and being the greatness of us? Allowing that to show up. What invitation could you be to more of that in the world? So everywhere you have not acknowledged that you being the greatness of you will expand every area of your life. Would you be willing to destroy and I create that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pun, pack, all night, shorts, boys, and beyond. So I do hope that you continue with that list of the greatness of you and that if you haven't already, begin that little booklet of ideas um, and begin to ask when, now or later, and what would it take for you to ask for help today? And what is the universe desiring to gift you today that would allow you to truly actually create the business, the life that you truly desire? So again, visit us on joyofbusiness.com or you can visit me on sylviapuentes.com. You can also visit me at access consciousness forward slash Sylvia Puentes. And I hope to see you all either online for a class or in person someplace in the world. Thank you so much for showing up today. And what would it take for you to show up as the greatness of you and have it contribute to your life, business, and everyone around you? Thank you all. Thank you.